Um, so this, this is a talk about a project that we have in OPNFE called the, the, the VNF Event Stream um, project. And it's uh, produced by myself and Alok Gupta, who leads a team inside AT&T that developed the, uh, the software that we'll, we'll talk about uh, as, uh, that was seeded to this project in, in, in OPNFE, which is the, the open platform for NFE. We call it OPNFE, specifically not OpenNFE, because OpenNFE is an HP product, of course. So this is OPNFE, right? Um, the goal of this is, is that we want to re reduce the time it takes to integrate a VNF into our network. Um, and I'll explain why that's a concern. Um, by promoting a common model for the data that is used uh, to monitor that VNF and to, uh, to, to manage it over its life cycle. Um, the reason why we want to do this is because the history shows, you know, SNMP was developed. The uh, vendors implement a, a, a MIB specific for their, their device. Those MIBs tend to vary. Um, you know, people may use SNMP. They may use other protocols, you know, such as, you know, CORBA, MTOSI, OSSJ, et cetera. Uh, and, and the way they use those protocols and those data formats can vary so that they can assign, for example, a severity one, another one assigns it as severity five, you know, it's in, and there's no consistency and significant, uh, uh, you know, fragmentation in that space. Um, the, for, for the key uh, performance indicators, et cetera, um, and um, the, often deliver those just in a file format, for example. And so, you know, integrating these things takes time. It's a very significant development effort. Sometimes it takes months to implement this inside a, a, a monitoring system. Um, the, um, not only does it take development, but it takes maintenance, et cetera. And it's just an overhead that, that we, have to, we have to eliminate as we move into NFV where you know, everything has to be optimized in NFE, uh, the, especially the development and the onboarding time for VNFs. Um, so the, the, what we're trying to do in this project is, is first of all, it's focused upon defining a common data model for um, analytics coming from VNFs. And, and by a data model, we mean um, you know, what data is gonna be collected, how it's gonna be structured, and, and, and what is its uh, syntax and, and values, et cetera. Um, we're, we're doing this in collaboration with, with standards organizations and open source communities um, at the same time. OPNFE is, is where we've started this project now based upon the, the code that ATT has published on, onto GitHub. Um, and we are integrating it into the OPNFE uh, platform at it, using a monitoring framework we're currently looking at various monitoring frameworks um, to actually use as part of the reference platform that we've, we've built in OPNFE. But we, we have code um, that we've, co we've contributed where a, a agent, which will run on the, the, the VNF, um, will post using JSON and using HTTP uh, the, the events to a collector, right? And we'll, we'll have uh, pretty soon a demonstration of that at the OpenStack Summit in Barcelona. We'll have a demonstration um, of a, a reference VNF, a, a sample VNF, integrated with this agent code. And we'll have a collector running, which, which receives that data based upon a variety of, um, of use cases for, for the monitoring. And uh, hopefully we'll have a, uh, you know, a, a control uh, loop framework that, that allows you to do things such as scale, react to faults, et cetera, um, you know, based upon that data. Sorry, so we're trying to put this all together for, for Barcelona, and you know I, I believe we're gonna we're gonna have it ready. So we're gonna have an AT and T booth there, and and you know you're welcome to come by and, and look at it. Um, you know we'll we'll publish the uh, the schedule for it on the OPNFE wiki, as you'll see later. Um, so we we we're publishing a uh, code that's in, can be integrated into the, the VNFs. Uh, it's currently uh, C libraries. And also collector to show you know the code that can receive the, the events, um, and eventually, as I said, we're going to incorporate into uh, OPNFV an actual uh, complete framework for for closed loop monitoring and, and reactive reaction. Um, we also are going to 
look at how we can integrate this into the OpenStack services because as you'll see, you know, there are, there are things we want to achieve that go beyond OpenStack, but at the same time, some of this data is potentially not visible yet to OpenStack and could be valuable there. So we're looking at, for example, Manasco, Vitraj, and, and Congress as potential consumers of, of this data, as, as well as uh, ways in which we can you know, uh, install the agent code on our OpenStack control plane so we can collect the same sort of data from the control plane as we, as we collect from the VNFs. Uh, and then a, a plan for finding a, a home for that because OPNFE really doesn't want to be a long-term home for code. It wants to be an integration project and work upstream so that we can, you know, every, we can benefit and then everyone can benefit from, from the software. So the question, you know, probably on a lot of people's mind is why is this relevant to OpenStack? Well, the, the, um, the, the big picture of what we have to do in, in managing a network is that we have to monitor many different types of devices and make sure that they're reliable, that they're scaled, um, you know, that, that they're efficient. You know, there's many, many different things we have to do. For example, workload placement, right, depends upon a very good understanding of what we have running, how it's performing, um, and you know, what the needs of the particular application are that we're trying to spin up so that we can then place it in the, in the right place where it can make a most effective use of the, of the network um, and vice versa. That requires you know, a deep observability, not only in, in, the, in the VNF, uh, but also uh, of the control plane itself um, and the, 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 you know, the physical hardware. So the, the applications, the, the, the virtual network functions and other types of virtual functions that, that aren't you know, based upon legacy network devices, the, the physical and virtual infrastructure, meaning the, you know, the compute, the storage, and the networking um, devices and, and the virtual devices that, that provide those services. And then, and then the infrastructure managers like OpenStack and SDN controllers. All of these things have to be monitored. Some of them have integrated capabilities. Um, OpenStack has a lot of integrated capabilities for monitoring itself, for monitoring the virtual infrastructure that it manages. But, but that, its internal telemetry is not a holistic solution to what we need across our network and, and in, in, into applications in, in all the detail that they, that they require. Um, also, we have you know, challenges applying that system uh, outside of OpenStack, right? Um, and, and applying it at scale. It was mentioned, for example, that, okay, there's issues with uh, Celometer at scale. There's issues maybe with RabbitMQ at scale. And, and while we're working in OpenStack to address those issues, right, we, we definitely want to solve those issues for OpenStack because I think it's good for the health of the community and the platform. And in the, in the short term and probably in the long term, again, having this big picture, you know, we're going to, to monitor using a, an approach which really sits largely outside of OpenStack because it's part of our overall ECOMP framework, uh, this enhanced control orchestration and, and management policy platform. Um, the, um, the last point being for OpenStack is, okay, there's some data that is going on in the, in the, in the, the VNF, some, some information probably of value to OpenStack that isn't yet exposed. I can't give you specific examples, but I'm sure as, as we begin to build out the, the, the data model from our service assurance team um, and, and align that inside OPNFV, we're going to you know, come up with data items that people in OpenStack will say, well, that, that would be useful to know, actually, for Vitrage or for Manasca, for example. So you know, making it possible to plug in this framework into OpenStack is, is one of the goals, because we want to give back to the community as well. So, so this, this shows the, the overall um, kind of block diagram you know, uh, illustrating the, the concept. So you have down at the bottom, you, you, you have the, uh, the running applications in various types of environments, right? So you need, we need to know what's happening at the bare metal host, for example, in a compute platform or, or the bare metal storage, right, platform. We need to know what's happening inside the virtualization host, inside the VM or inside the container, right? We need to know what's happening at the application itself. Right, the, the things that only are only relevant to the application. It's an own internal metrics, fault, performance, you know, uh, uh, analytics of various types. We need to know the, these things at multiple levels, 
All right, and so there will be agent code running in these multiple levels, like you probably have seen, you know, with like Nagios, for example, is a, is a common monitoring tool, right? Uh, Collect D is another monitoring tool, right? Um, this this agent, you know, this code, where, however it, it connects, collects that information and delivers it to the collector, this agent software will be running there in these various places and, and delivering that software, that, that information. The, the, the approaches we're looking at as far as how does it get that information exposed is um, to start with, go really simple, JSON over HTTP, right? Um, the idea is that when, when a VM, for example, let's take a VNF, when a, when a VNF is, is launched, its, it's identity, right, its, it's UUID, its Nova ID, will be injected into the VNF as, as a uh, metadata item. So it will know uh, also the, the, I, the IP address and the authentication parameters of the collector that it needs to connect to, uh, the, that the agent needs to collect, connect to. And so it will establish a connection to the collector, right? We will have multiple collectors, and so it'll be you know, assigned one um, and probably you know, redundant, et cetera. So it will establish a connection, and then it will begin a process of delivering analytics according to some pre-provisioned profile, some profile that's also interjected. So we'll have everything that, that the agent needs established at the time of the VNF startup so that the agent can, can connect to the collector and, and the data can begin flowing. And then we'll have a framework in which you can tune that set of data according to what really is, is bringing value um, in, in the, the way we want to monitor that particular application. Right? We, don't, we don't want to collect you know, terabytes of zeros, right? We're gonna, you know, the, the uh, one of the things I heard uh, uh, not long ago, very, very good analogy is that the, the, the valuable information is the information you don't expect, right? And that's what we wanna collect. So we, we wanna use machine learning to tune the amount of data that we get from the VNFs uh, and to be able to turn things on, in fact, uh, when we want, when we have a, a relative event. So there's a whole control system that we will also work on. But again, to bring back to the, the core of this idea, it's about the data model, right? However we manage it, however we control it, uh, you know, it's, it's about the data model. Um, the, another potential way to, to, to expose this is, is through a message bus system like, you know, like the one that OpenStack uses, or maybe a shared state system, uh, you know, SCD or, or whatever. There's a whole variety of different approaches where you, you could, you could uh, implement the control framework. Uh, and, and that's very important because we're going to integrate a control framework into OPDFE for the sake of demonstrating you know, how this works and, and making it part of the, the, uh, the platform you can download and install and use, right? Um, then you also see, it, as far as OpenStack being a consumer, right, of this data, we, we could write plugins, we could have those plugins collect the information that's on a, a message bus or or collect the information that's, that's pushed from the collector, right, based upon rules that say what information is relevant to OpenStack. You know, we don't want to deliver this, this tons and tons of data to OpenStack and burden it, but we, we do want to deliver the things that are relevant, right? So that's the overall um, concept. Um, I mentioned what we're going to publish in, in the OPNFE get as, as part of it. Um, and, um, you know, as, as we go, please feel free to, to jump in with any questions. We can also come back. I think I'll have enough time at the end because I tend to go through these things pretty fast and I try to slow down a little bit. Then looking at the data model, right, um, the basic framework for how we're organizing this is pretty simple. There's a header. The header describes the context in which the data was collected, right? Uh, right now we have focus upon the VNF, right? But we're going to expand this to you know, other things such as, uh, such as the host, et cetera. Um, in, in that header, you have the, the, you know, the, the common information about the source. For example, I mentioned the, v, the VNF, the, the VM. Um, you know, individual VMs, you may have multiple inside a VNF, right? So that each, each VM, is going to have a UUID, and that's going to be an identifier, you know, of, of the source, as as well the the domain uh, which is which will indicate what type of event this is, what type of focus this this data uh, relates to. Um, 
it's, it's going to be an extensible data model, so you can, you can add any type of, of uh, additional attributes or additional domains to the, to the events. Um, I mentioned the, 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 the collector connection and the data profile that will help tune what is collected and how it's collected. Um, the, um, the data profile will be fully controllable um, because, as I said, we want to optimize the overhead of the data that we, that we deliver. Um, and, and so you see some of the, some of the examples of, of what we have in, in vision, and, and we, we started out with, with fault and measurement and application domains as part of our data model. We, we've extended it to syslog and, and a variety of other things uh, that you see here as, as examples. And this, this is um, you know, de development and progress. Um, this is very much an eye chart, but this is, this is just a, 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 a UML diagram of the Yang representation of this. Uh, of this schema, and, and I think um, think if I, well, I probably can't, oh, there you go. If I do this, it worked on my, yeah, look at that. Wow. Okay, see, and so it, it gets a little easier to read, but I'll show you a, 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 a zoom in on this, which is the, the fault event, right, which, which has alarm condition, alarm interface, et cetera. The, the measurement event, which has more, uh, um, you know, more data in it, some, some generic things and then some specific things related to specific types of devices or, or, or um, performance related capabilities of the VNF. And then a, you know, a generic event report for the, for the, the uh, application itself. Um, and this is just a, you know, a, a very basic start to, um, okay, let me find, scroll out, right? The very basic start to the model, okay? And, and as I say here, for example, this is a UML diagram based upon a Yang representation of the JSON schema, right? Uh, that's a, a key point because we're, we are going to publish this in JSON to keep it simple. We're, we're using JSON schema to define it. Um, it's very easy to convert that to Yang, to use it, uh, for example, in any kind of, of uh, telemetry system that's based upon Yang. For example, the, the Open Config project. If you're familiar with Open Config, which which you know uh, on on GitHub they have a a lot of Yang models for different types of network devices and and, and functions. Right? They also have a Yang model for streaming telemetry, right? Which which for example gives you the ability to define subscriptions uh, to different types of telemetry and associate a protocol to the delivery method for that type of telemetry because it, it will vary based upon you know, the, the, the needs of the, of the particular type of telemetry data. Um, we will you know, give the ability to a, a adapt this. We're gonna have tools that, that, you know, that make it easy to adapt to Yang and, and it will be also compatible with you know, HTTP REST, uh, uh, NetConf, which you know, especially if you're using, for example, an SDN controller um, will be a typical southbound interface for, for, for getting access and or, or controlling and, and um, getting access to the data, right? Um, Avro, which is, which is a project um, that we're looking at as well. GRPC, which is another uh, optimized, I think it's HTTP2 based uh, framework for, for delivering uh, uh, streaming analytics. Um, and I said as, as well that, you know, the, you will have the ability to, to tune and select the, the protocol that's used for delivering the data based upon its, its nature. For example, if you're gonna be streaming large amounts of binary data, you just will not use REST, right? Um, you know, and, and the, so other types of data you might wanna distribute using a shared state mechanism because simply, you, you know, it, it, you never know when it's gonna happen and it, you just might wanna to, to just keep an eye on it. The, um, the, the zoom in here again is, is on the, the, the fault event, right? You have some very basic things, the event se severity, you know, specific problem, uh, um, and then more, more detail about the, uh, um, the event that you could add as an arbitrary extension, okay? Um, as I said, we're, you know, we're working to, to expand this. We're working with SDOs. 
um, and I'll, I'll get into that in a little bit. But, but it's, it's a, a very basic model that, that we've established as a, as a starting point. This, this kind of shows that the, the bigger vision for what we want to do with this, right? So th this is a kind of a gen generic illustration of one of the key parts of, of ECOMP, ATD's ECOMP, okay? Uh, we have a, um, a, a, func a part of ECOMP called the Data Collection and Analytics Engine, which, which is the receiver, as you see here, the, the VNF will send events to the collector or the collector gets them somehow, right? In, in, uh, in ECOMP, and this is similar, I think, in other frameworks that we're, we're looking at uh, um, for incorporation into to OPNFV, that data is put on a data bus or thrown into a data lake or whatever, and then you have plugins which have, which, which have the ability to, you know, to do a workflow-based or just you know, an a, a intelligence uh, engine process over that data for various purposes, right? For example, the three uh, use cases here show, you know, there's, there's a false alarm comes in, the collector throws it on the data bus, an event processor is waiting to see that particular event, it picks it up, um, it, it uh, says, well, I, maybe I don't have enough information, I have to actually correlate this with something else to make sure it's a real alarm, and, and, it, and it waits for some subsequent information to come in in another event, and then the correlation engine uh, um, or, or pulls it out of the data lake, then the correlation engine decides at this point it's, it's, it's a false alarm or, or it's not, right? And, and so a, a response may be um, there, there really was a failure, let's send a notification out to somewhere or let's create a trouble ticket or whatever. So and the, the, similar for the other cases, you actually you have a VM failure that goes into this, this you know, system which, which analyzes it and then you know, various plugins of that system cooperate in, in you know, uh, taking the appropriate response, right? Uh, in many cases, it, there won't be any response. It'll just be, we've, we've collected data and we're gonna use it you know, at some point to optimize things. For example, I mentioned workload placement, right? Uh, a lot of this data will just go in and be used by you know, other, um, you know, other functions inside the overall ECOMP e framework. Um, the, the interesting thing about this, this idea of having you know, an open source um, framework like this for, for closed loop monitoring and control was that was actually one of the most interesting things to people when we presented this as an OP and a fee, right? And I, I had to tell them at the time, I said, you know, this is definitely in our roadmap. I mean, just wait till early 2017 or, or whatever S soon, right? We will be coming out with, with you know, ECOMP in open source. And, um, and in the meantime, we'll probably, you know, experiment with other frameworks as well. But, you know, the, the, the thing we really want to start with is this common data model. Um, the, and the, to, to summarize again the reasons why, okay? We're going to significantly improve the return on investment in VNF onboarding by getting the vendors to agree to use a common data model for analytics. It's part, the, the, we've published it in at and as, as part of our vendor guidelines. Um, and you know it's it's not always an easy thing to change the way you do your you know your telemetry as as a vendor, but the fact is we we all are going through a period of very significant change, and we all have to collaborate and, and compromise and, and move to a more effective uh, um, you know uh, system long term, right? Uh, and there's very little you know in the end in, in, in this age there's very little differentiation value in you know in analytics. I believe. Um, as I said, we're, we're, OPNFE is working with SDOs, for example, TM Forum, Oasis, and Etsy, to make sure that we accommodate all of the things into this data model that really are important. And an example being um, beyond just the, the, the real-time state of a VNF, okay? One of the things you really need to know, in especially in a virtualized environment where you never know where your your VNF will land, right? Uh, you need to have a very clear understanding of the, the heart physical and virtual environment, as I said earlier, in which that VNF is actually running. So we have to introspect and have a deep inventory of the hardware, you know, down to the version of the NIC, the version of the chip, the, the, the firmware that's in it, you know, the, the, the CPU, what features are turned on in the BIOS, et cetera. 
So we can make decisions about workload placement, or maybe we, maybe we detect some vulnerability. You know, someone issues a, 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 a firmware update, and we have to know that in some of these servers, you know, you need to make, uh, um, you need to make a, 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 you know, a configuration change, or a, or a firmware update, or, or swap out a board, for example, right? Um, this is all part of the data model that we are going to you know, promote standardization of, for example, through TM Forum. And, and there's a, a cross SDO group working specifically on that. And so we're going to publish this as part of this open source project in, inside OPNFE. Um, we will, in OPNFE, we will also, as I said, prototype the, the integration with OpenStack services. Um, you know, we'll demonstrate that to, to show the value. You know, we'll actually have it working, and then we will issue blueprints and see if we can get you know, OpenStack community support for, for doing that integration and upstreaming that code in, into, into OpenStack. Um, and you know, we, we welcome any collaborators, anybody who wants to take advantage of this. So this is a, a summary slide, and, and um, here's the link. I think I showed it earlier to the project. There's a couple other projects. While you go to OpenFE, look at, there's, there's the, the, the Copper project, which is about configuration policy. I, I implemented as part of OpenFE uh, Colorado uh, in this project uh, the, the RDO and the, the canonical support for the, open, uh, the OpenStack Congress project, a Juju Charm and, a, and a, a puppet module, with the support of Red Hat and canonical. And we're maintaining that. We're, gonna, we're upstreaming that currently. So that, that is a project about that. It's you know, very easy now to, to get Congress installed in your OpenStack instance. I have a bash script and I have, you know, for example, modules to do that, right? Um, as well, the models project is about model-driven NFE, you know, about using you know, VNF managers and driving convergence on the blueprint specifications based on Tosca and Yang, uh, and, you know, and demonstrating portability of VNFs uh, you know, through that project. You know, so the, the overall, you, you, I probably see a theme here about, about modeling, right? The overall, one of the overall drivers behind at and strategy is that we want the, the, the future NFVI environment to be totally automated and model-driven. Everything should be model-driven, including the analytics, including the workloads, including the way you define from, a, from coming out of the developer's hands what, what your VNF as you've designed it is intended to be compatible with. So that you know, your developer and service provider can say, okay, these two things match, right? Or, or maybe in the future you can have a marketplace, right? Where the developer says, okay, I, I want to offer this VNF to somebody and you know, it, it, it has these capabilities, it needs these things, right? And then you know, basically it can get, it can get uh, distributed. You know, and people will know that it works, right? It's been tested, et cetera, uh, all those things. So those are a couple of projects I, I welcome you to, to, to look, look at, and, and if you want to get involved, um, you know, it's all, it's all open source, and, and uh, you know, mailing lists and everything are there. So um, that's all my uh, things I want to point out. Any, any questions you have? Okay. Yeah. Ali, here you go. Yeah, yeah sure. But you might, I don't know if it's on at the bottom. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the question is the message bus that you showed earlier. Yeah. Um, have you thought about what protocols to use? Specifically, one thought that I had, I don't know if you've looked at it. Uh, I know some of my colleagues uh, are doing work in uh, AMQP. I don't know if that's appropriate here. Um, it just seemed like, I hear this yes, one. right. Um, so just if you could comment on the message bus and if you've looked at AMQP or, or other protocols that might be appropriate there. Um, in, in, in summary, okay, no, okay, uh, because the, there, there are many, many um, projects, right, which support the, the ability of things to connect to each other, right, and, um, you know, it's it's going to be really for AT and T. It's it's a decision of the of the the deployment and the evolution of, of the way Ecomp is built, right? For the open source projects, you know anything is on the table, right? We we want to adopt what makes sense. Uh, obviously, we do use um, the 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 message buses that OpenStack uses inside uh, OpenFE, 
Uh, and, and we could plug into that, for example. Uh, I think AMQP and RabbitMQ, they're, they're similar right. in ways, right? right. But no not, no, not specifically. That, that, that whole aspect of it is something that, that we're, uh, you know, we're, we're putting out there for, for, for proposals. And it'll, it'll really be the thing that's easiest to integrate and, and that works you know, effectively for, for the, as many use cases as we can get. Okay. I'll, yeah. I'll send your slides to my colleagues, sure. see if they want to get involved. Yeah. OK, cool. We're also looking, for example, at, at, at the, uh, uh, I think it's the Panda project, um, which is another, another framework as well. Um, and, and at, uh, I, I mentioned the, um, what was the, uh, the Avro project, which is an Apache project, for example. So there's a, you know, a variety of options there. It, really, it's not, not the main focus, though. The, you know, okay. Any other questions? Okay, sure. More about how you plan to incorporate machine learning into this. Okay. Um, so yeah, machine learning as as part of this this more or less uh, depiction here. Um, I don't have specific information as to you know what we're going to use, right? Um, probably once we in, in OPNFV, once we have a back end system for storing this data, probably, you know, Hadoop or one of these large uh, systems with, you know, uh, Elasticsearch and all these components, right, that, that allow you to mine it, right? Um, you know, based upon what's available, we'll probably integrate, you know, something for that purpose, but we, we haven't really thought that far yet. Yeah, they, it helps them. There you go. Okay, cool. So is there, so this was mostly like the guts, right? In terms of, um, so defining how the guts are gonna be. So, so what's up with the display of, uh, is there any mm -hmm. standardization or, uh, say I'm talking more from say a production perspective, right? Okay. So production folks. Okay. Uh, they're really scared in terms of uh, how do they correlate an event mm. in an underlay, overlay, mm. VNF, and maybe the end user on top of the VNF. Mm. So the ability to correlate um, an event across these, mm -hmm. you know, stay, you know, across these pieces. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I can understand why people are scared because th there are there are many levels of concern, right? And and those concerns can sometimes conflict, right? It's, it's just like doing cross-state optimization in a mobility network, right? You can have the RAN and you can have the you know the EPC, right? Uh, um, you know, fighting basically over who's going to optimize what, right? And so th this is this is a very significant problem, and and I I know that. You know, for example, in, in AT and T, we have a we have a tiered, you know, closed loop system with feedback between the tiers, right? Uh, where relevant, right, to to allow one tier to inform the next, you know, of of things that it has determined as necessary, right? Um, so, s from a service provider perspective, you know, from the infrastructure service provider perspective, to the to the to the you know NFV service provider perspective, to the to the you know, the business unit, right, and to the end user, right? Different events and, you know, the reactions may be important. That's, that's a very complex thing, and, and I, I have yet to see any real open source work in trying to solve, you know, those, those sorts of problems, right? Um, I, if, if anything, that's probably one of the areas of secret sauce that you'll see, you know. Presentational perspective, like having a dashboard, especially the example that you gave was a pretty good one in terms of if you have to upgrade a firmware somewhere um, you know, on, our, on your spine or on right. your leaf, then right. what is it going to mean for the VNF and which, which ones will go down, that, that aspect of correlation? Yeah, I, I, I hear what you're saying. Correlation is a, is a very complex thing, especially when you have 
you know, a multi-layer virtualized environment. Um, and, and I know that we have scientists devoted to trying to figure that out, right? But, um, yeah, that's all. Right. But, I mean, if, if we did have some kind of, you know, you know, intelligent machine learning engine that you, that you could look at various layers of, of significance, right, and correlate events across them, um, that would be great. But, uh, but I, don't, I don't yet see that. Um, yeah, at least that, that's a much bigger goal, probably outside the scope of this particular project. Thanks. Okay. All right. Okay? Right. Okay, well, cool. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it.